Welcome fellow chess enthusiasts to another chess video on an apparently chemistry based channel. I say apparently because I've uploaded 61 videos so far and exactly one of them has been about chess. Those 60 non-chess videos have, on the day I'm recording this, about 32,000 views and the chess video has nearly 101,000. I find this disparity highly amusing, and while I'll still make chemistry videos, you, the wonderful people of the internet, want chess instead. Well, maybe this wonderful person doesn't, but their insult game is terrible, so let's forget them and these statistics. Let's get to the chess. In this video, I'm trying to determine how large of a set of moves players have to choose from in the game. Helpfully, the moves in a chess game are recorded in Portable Game Notation, or PGN, and on the screen now is the PGN for the Evergreen game. In this game, the actions performed by Adolf Anderson and his opponent include moving a piece without capturing, checking, or checkmating the opponent, capturing a piece without checking or checkmating the opponent, moving a piece and checking the opponent, capturing a piece and checking the opponent, and finally, capturing a piece and checkmating the opponent. There is a six-move type that did not occur in the Evergreen game since checkmate can only occur once, and that's moving a piece and checkmating the opponent. If I stop now and claim the answer to the question is 6, but really 5, I cannot imagine anyone being satisfied. However, I think I have found the groups I can organize the moves into. It's time to truly find all of the moves starting with the pawn. Though it is the most common piece on the board, the pawns have altogether the fewest number of potential moves. Let's start with ones that do not involve capturing material. The reason for starting with out captures is that all eight pawns, regardless of the file they are in, have the same number of moves. There are two opening moves for the pawn, four moves up the board, and when it reaches the seventh rank, the next move is a promotion. Since a player has the option of promoting to a knight, bishop, rook, or queen, there are ten moves a pawn can make without capturing. This is true regardless of which file the pawn is on, which means there are 80 no capture moves for the pawn. Any of these moves can conceivably involve checking or checkmating the opposition king, so we currently stand at 240 possible moves. Now let's consider captures. A pawn in the A file can only capture diagonally to the right. For the first few squares, nothing interesting happens, but when a pawn reaches the fifth rank, or fourth rank for black, there is an additional capture on façon. When the pawn reaches the end of the board, once again there are four promotion options. The A pawn still has 10 moves, and the same can be said for the H pawn since it can only capture in one direction. Pawns in the B through G files can capture to either side, and when they reach the end of the board, promote that way as well. The math is nice here as two capture options doubles the number of potential moves a pawn has. In total, there are 140 ways a pawn can be used to capture another piece. Like before, these are all possible with checks or checkmates, resulting in a grand total of 660 pawn moves in the game. Performing this calculation is a bit easier for the remaining pieces, even the knight with its ridiculous jumping move. The worst place for a knight is the corner, where it only has two squares to move to. Shifting the knight progressively closer to the center of the board, the number of options increases to 3, then 4, up to 6, and finally 8 in the middle 16 squares. As you can see in the table, this totals 336 moves. What we saw for the pawns remains true for the knight, and the check and checkmate totals are the same. Unlike the pawns, the capturing ability of the knight does not depend on where it is found on the board, so 336 moves applies when involving captures, bringing the grand total of knight moves to 2016. This highlights what I need to do for the remaining pieces. Simply find the number of no capture moves and multiply by 6. In my video on the value of the pieces, quite a few of you told me that a single bishop can only land on half of the squares. Honestly, I can't believe I didn't know this before, which might explain a lot about my rating. But anyway, like the knight, they have the fewest potential moves from the edge of the board with just 7 from any of those squares. For every step into the center, the number of options goes up by 2, so that by the time the bishop is in the very center it has up to 13 squares to move to. In all, that's 560 moves for the bishop. This value applies for the other 5 situations, bringing the total potential moves to 3,360. Rooks are the simplest piece of all for this calculation, as no matter where the rook is placed, it always has the same number of moves, 14. That's 896 potential moves, and the grand total for the rook is 5,376. Although maybe the queen is actually easier. She moves like a bishop and rook, so the total number of moves, 1,456, is simply the sum of bishop and rook moves. This value applies in all situations, and the queens unsurprisingly have the greatest number of potential moves at 8,736. Kings should be pretty simple to figure out because they can only move one square at a time. 
They have the fewest moves from the corner with three, but have five options on all remaining edge squares. Anywhere else though, the king has eight moves resulting in a total of 420, and the same is true for captures. Where it gets tricky is the king cannot directly check or checkmate an opponent, but it can move and reveal a discovered check or checkmate. Even though we are aware that the king itself is not actually attacking the opposition king, the PGN will attribute check or checkmate to the king because it was the piece moved. Adding the 420 moves for checks and checkmates brings the total to 2,520. If you thought I forgot about castling again, I have good news for you, I didn't, and for simplicity we'll attribute it as a king move. Castling can be to the king side or queen side and will never involve captures, so adding these six moves will bring the total up to 2,526. Here is the full table of potential moves. Whenever you sit down to play a game of chess, you may play one of an astronomically huge number of games, but you will only be choosing from a list of 22,674 moves to actually play. Now, if you already have a comment ready to post that I'm wrong, you may want to wait on hitting enter. This number simply represents the upper limit found by considering the moves pieces are allowed to play, but not whether the move is ever possible to play. While some of them are definitely unlikely, you can actually play all of the pawn, knight, rook, and queen moves counted. The problem with the bishop and king is that, while all of the regular moves or captures are possible, they cannot always be played with check or checkmate. Let's find these impossible moves beginning with the bishop. While nobody puts baby in a corner, you may find your bishop in one. From any of them, you cannot move the bishop to the other corner and put your opponent in check or checkmate directly or via discovery. This is true whether or not you capture, so from each corner there are four impossible moves. This reduces the set size by 16. When it comes to the king, we find ourselves facing a similar dilemma, but on a larger scale. Remember, the king never directly attacks the opposition king, so a check or checkmate relies on discovery. This limitation means the problem area is not just the corner, but the entire edge of the board. The king cannot move from an edge square to another square on the same edge with or without capture and check or checkmate the opponent. That's eight impossible moves on all edge squares. However, if the king is in the corner, the diagonal move never results in check or checkmate either because the king never moves out of the way of another piece. This adds four more impossible moves for each corner, meaning the number of impossible king moves is 60 per scenario for a total of 240. Now's a good time to revisit and update the table. After adjusting for moves that can never actually be played, the size of the set of moves you get to choose from in a game is 22,418. Considering both colors have identical sets, this means there are 44,836 possible moves. A natural question to ask is whether all of those moves have been played. Naively, the answer is yes, because the number of casual to high stakes Grandmaster games in history is certainly in the trillions. But without access to all games ever played, I sought out the next best thing, the Lee Chess database. Thanks to poor coding skills and a slow laptop, it took me about two months to analyze all 5.7 billion games they have. One reason it took so long is I was interested in way more than just the moves played. The spreadsheets containing all the data have over 6.6 .6 million values. I will eventually share all four of them with you. During this time, a wonderful video by Paralogical was uploaded, and they concluded that not all possible moves have been played, but their approach is different than the one I have shown you. If you've ever wondered how things like Newton and Leibniz's independent discoveries of calculus happened, well, here's a modern example, just much more important, of course. And here's what I found. Both white and black have 22,418 moves to play, and there are currently 45 remaining moves for white, all with the king. Meanwhile, black has 51 moves left, with two for the bishop and the rest for the king. All remaining moves are capture checkmates. While our definitions of moves differed, paralogical conjecture that a type of bishop capture checkmate is the least likely. The fact my analysis shows there are still remaining bishop capture checkmates may provide a bit of support for their conjecture. White had played all of the knight moves by November 2020, and it was over three years later in January of this year that White finally played all of the bishop moves. Black didn't play all of the knight moves until November 2021, so I would expect those two bishop moves to be played within the next few months. There are too many king moves remaining to say something meaningful about them. However, the rate of new king checkmates for 2024 is about one per month per color. If that trend holds and they should all be played by the end of 2028, with white finishing earlier in the year than black. 
So what are you waiting for? Go find a new checkmate. And thank you very much for watching.